Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome to the Fashion Bunker. Now, just uh, one quick note to let you know before we begin the actual video. I do, because of work and time limitations, pre-record a lot of the videos just to be safe, to have that buffer because I just travel, it could be something last minute and then I, I want to always have material for you guys. But, so, I will be going back to the schedule of the videos that you have been watching, except now I had to cut it really in tightly and closely because something amazing happened. <laughs> and this amazing thing I want to share with you guys, and some of you have, have been asking me and telling me and demanding for me to be the first in the world to review this, and I shall be. Damn, we got it. Boy, uh, Eau de Parfum by Chanel, and it is an Eau de Parfum. Now... As close as I get to this, I don't know if we could really see it, but it does says Eau de Parfum down there, 75 ml, boy. Now this has been um, purchased in a new boutique in Paris, uh, a new Chanel boutique called, well, it's Chanel in 40 Rue de Franc Bourgeois or something like that. I probably pronounced it wrong. Anyway, it's a relatively new boutique, I guess, and they do uh, perfumes, yay! So I'm super happy. Um, let's unbox it together and smell it for the first time. I'm super curious. So what I do is I open it at the bottom. Oh, should I do it at the top? Let me think. Now let's do it at the bottom. It's more simple. So it says Boy Chanel Eau de Parfum batch code number. I can't see. By the way, my uh, allergies, my spring allergies, my trees and grass and all that stuff. Hay fever. Oh my God. It's kicking in like, ooh. First thing, oh my god, I'm unboxing this, but I'm so freaking excited. I have never smelled it before, guys. The box is like totally hermetically sealed, smells like paper. Um, the liquid is greenish. It's like a minty, minty, fougere green, if I may say. Uh, it's like, um, I don't know. What color is it? I mean, you can't really see very well. Maybe if I do a little bit of contrast, my black behind, you could see. And that's the bottle. So let's take it out, 75 ml. I mean, yes, they are expensive. Ah, batch number, there it is. So the first batch ever made, I guess, 0401 is the batch code. Um, what I'm gonna do now is <laughs> spray it immediately. Oh my God, I'm so excited. This is like a ritual. I'm wearing my Chanel, I'm wearing black uh, Jeremy Scott, very kind of regal, even though it's, you know, like torn. It's kind of uh, like uh, Frankenstein-y in a way. Anyway, actually, before we spray it, one thing. So we know that boy, it kind of plays with the concept of boy, but also of boy Capel, Chanel's biggest love or said to be one of her biggest loves and unfortunately died in a car accident. And then one of the legends, because there are so, so many legends, one of the legends wants it that she dressed all women in black after that. And since then, to mourn his death, she has created a little black dress. Interesting. Now, not all of the mythology says that. This is one of the versions of the story, my personal favorite. So I'm going to stick to that one. Uh, also kind of like playing with the boy, feminine, masculine, the first Les Explosives perfume to have an eau de parfum concentration, which makes it cost... For 75 milliliter, 175 euro, and for 200 milliliter spray, uh, this is also spray, 75 milliliter, 200 milliliter spray would cost us around, uh, what was it, 325 euro or something like that, uh, really expensive. So anyway, let's get right to it. Uh, drum roll. Oh, it bites. Oh my God, what is this? Okay, it's a mix of a lot of different things, but first things first, it's a Chanel. Oh, it's so bitey, aldehydes. They're there. Um, so, Olivier Polge, the son of Jacques Polge, created this little beauty. Uh, he also created Misia and Chanel Chance Au Vive. Um, boy, it's his third creation. It kind of plays with masculine, feminine. I totally get both in here. 2016, year it's launched. Now, what are our ingredients? So, um, what we have online, it says rose gerani uh, geranium. Then we got lemon. 
Then we got, oh, come on, it's not telling me anything. Vanilla, we got grapefruit, we got sandalwood, we got orange blossom, we got um, musk, then we got regular rose, we got hel heliotrope, and we got lavender. Now, the fougere note, um, it's so rich. Literally, it fills me up there into the nose, and then it just like kind of floats in the back, back regions of the nose, olfactively speaking, it's zesty and you can sense the bitiness of it. It's not an eau de toilette. And Chanel delivered on that. Now, mind you, I do not, oh my God. There's like something of poison in there as well. But, but, an opium pour homme, and I, I sense out some pepper in here as well. I know it doesn't list it there, but something peppery and bitey is there, definitely. Mm, what else does it say? I mean, moss is not listed. I guess, I don't know if they're even allowed to, according to the IFRA um, regulations, use moss, but mossy is kind of... It's not as earthy, like moss could be something associated to like uh, wood, woody tones and kind of wet humidity and, 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 and the, like kind of the lower regions of a forest and then earthy. This is not that way at all. It's, it's not like that wet vetiver that you kind of like, you know, just like with your Dirty hands, you go into the dirty soil, you pull the vetiver out, and, and that's how, like, uh, sycamore smells. This is not like that. This one is sophisticated. This one is not dirty at all. It's powdery, but it's um, sparkly. And I would actually, you know, they, they, they like to say that number 1930, number, the 1932 is uh, because of the aldehydes, it's supposed to be sparkly like a diamond. Actually, this one is more sparkly, but sparkly, not like a diamond. This one is more effervescent sparkly, like bubbly water. So if you want, if you want to try bubbly water, that's the one. It's green. It's definitely greener than actually the liquid shows it to be because the liquid is a very light, light, light hue of green. Now, as I was saying before, I don't tend, I never actually do a review of a perfume right after opening it without ever having smelled it before, but without ever having smelled it before, but uh, I, I needed to do, I wanted to do the unboxing. I needed to do this unboxing in front of you guys. So it's hard for me to, to dive into it because even though I unbox a perfume for you guys, uh, that means that I just purchased it. I usually, and you'll see coming up soon, stay tuned, there will be an unboxing of another Chanel Exclusives but that I unboxed some time ago for you guys. But anyway, it's a perfume that I've been smelling for years until I got to kind of really appreciate it. This one for the first time. So what's the story that inspires me with this perfume? Usually I smell my arm to just trigger memory patterns that I already have experienced with a certain perfume. This one doesn't have them yet. It's virgin territory, literally virgin territory. And uh, it's intense. It's definitely intense. I almost get a feeling of like pine cone somewhere in there. Um, Damn, I wish I knew how the dry down is. There's the vanilla in there as well. And the vanilla kind of is battling its way through the grapefruit. <laughs> it, it's quite awkward, to be honest. It's still effervescent. The vanilla, I, I sense the warmth of the vanilla, which is kind of, I think, what reminds me a little bit of the original poison. Um, I I would almost say there's like a poponux in there. It's not listed, but it's kind of opoponoxy, plummy. It, it it reminds me of the opening of the first, first, like the pre-note of the first note 
of the first original formulation of, of Poison by Christian Dior. And, but it's more young, meaning more modern, meaning made in 2016 and not in the 80s. But at the same time, it has something very reminiscent of, of, and you know, as much as I hate saying it, of like male perfumes from the 80s, like some powerhouse perfume from the 80s. This could be the lavender version of Anteos. Now, lavender in here is not the lavender we get in Jersey. Jersey is pure lavender. Lavender in its purest essential oil form. This one here, the lavender I sense out in here doesn't smell as natural uh, or as, as clean and as oily and as essentially as the Jersey lavender. This one is... Mm, This one is, this one smells more not medicinal. You know how it actually has a little bit of camphor? Uh, camphora, camphor. Uh, so it's, it smells like something that could awaken your senses. And that might be the grapefruit touch because, you know, there's a lot of like creams, body cream, Shiseido used to use that. I remember other brands as well. Like a grapefruit based camphor cream that you would put on your belly to like help your uh, stomach kind of like... Um, circulate the blood through it better so you would kind of like melt fat easier from your stomach area and then they would say to also inhale the smell of that particular cream so that you would kind of also like lose appetite because you would feel more saturated it worked i used up like one or two bottles a couple of years back but i mean you know i think it's more of a gimmicky thing rather than a thing that actually works but this thing this perfume has that kind of with every inhale you do like my eyes get slightly wet or dry or, or it bites a little bit like tiger balsam but not not like tiger balm in itself but more like this camphor touch and grapefruit it's a bit of a mess i have to say <laughs> i mean it's a bit of a mess just because i i'm having difficulties to orient it it, it literally when they said when, you know, Olivier or whoever for him wrote the text to describe this fragrance, they said that it would be kind of genderless, that it's like a male perfume for a girl, like a girl wearing the male shirt of her boyfriend. It's like a mix of all sorts of things. So it's genderless rather than unisex. And I totally get it. It's very confusing. It's a gender wise. It's a mess. And it's awkward. It's funny that they say that this perfume is genderless or that they're kind of promoting it as a genderless perfume because to me, genderless perfumes do not question gender. This one, however, does because it's extremely like masculine. If you ever smelled Red by Giorgio Beverly Hills for men, of course, this is more elegant. The composition and the ingredients are more elegant, but it has that kind of bitey 80s vibe to a male cologne. And at the same time, we have rose, hint of violet, we have lavender, the geranium, heliotrope, lemon. All those ingredients kind of combine together. Well, the lemon is maybe more tendon to the male side, but all of these ingredients are kind of feminine. So I had literally smelled this weird clash of like, male hitting female and they just go like and then they like start doom doom you know they like start swimming and twirling but right now i don't know how the dry down will be but right now they don't click they're fighting and they're battling the male and the female is it, it it's a battle it, there's literally a struggle going on here do i like that It definitely makes me want to smell it over and over again, not necessarily because it's pleasant or not pleasant, but it definitely makes me want to smell it because it makes me want to figure out how does this battle end? Like, do they, do they ultimately, do they really twirl in together or do they kind of stay detached? Now, bear with me, guys. This is, as we're going along with the review, this literally, these are the impressions it's giving me. So some of them might be contradictory in themselves because what I'm feeling like, five minutes ago might be different now that the perfume is evolving. Uh, so 
like ride the horsey with me, shall ya? <laughs> for the sake of experiencing boy for the first time. <laughs> Plus, you know, I have my allergies, so my nose is kind of stuffy. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's very pleasant, but also artificial in a way. And I don't quite know if it's the aldehydes or this this mossy touch, this fougere touch in there that I don't really... Yeah. It's a keeper, definitely. Uh, I'm starting to feel a powdery touch in there on my personal, like on my personal skin, on my impersonal skin, on my skin, it tends to kind of develop now after a couple of minutes. It's so bizarre. It tends to develop like male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female. It, it keeps on switching all the time. And that might cause a headache, I have to say, because uh, my brain is slightly in an overdose right now of a kind of a tilt of information. And I cannot tell you what it reminds me. You know, it's all. it also smells, and I'll, don't get this the wrong way, when you would fill up a pan of a lot of different vegetables, like frozen vegetables that you would like, like fresh, but frozen vegetables like peas, carrots, a little bit of cauliflower, everything. You would just add a little bit of olive oil and a bit of ro rosemary and rosemary, not rosemary, uh, rosemary, ro rosmarino. I always want to say it in Italian. Sorry, guys. Uh, rosemary, basil too, even though I don't smell the basil in here, but then you would mix it all up and then you would get that slight feeling of you know in the pan when you're not burning the stuff you just they get slightly over not overcooked but with the heat and the warmth they tend to get a bit brown the vegetables and then together with the olive oil they emanate that sort of smell that kind of transforms them from a vegetable into something edible and gourmand in a way there's that here as well now uh oddly enough however all of these things that I get, I still do not get at all on my skin this kind of fresh white shirt that I would get with, let's say, Dior's uh, Cologne Blanche from the Privé line. Their white shirt, unbuttoned, just washed, fresh, smells like a breeze of fresh air. That would I get it with Cologne Blanche, I don't get with Boy. Boy's more uptight. It's not Boy Capel to me. To me, it's like a boy that's a little bit, I don't want to say a bitch, but uh, it's definitely a boy that has a bit of an issue with, uh, with himself uh, <laughs> or with herself. And he's slightly twisted. I have to say it's a very strange combination. Now, when I said at the open in the opening with this like particular bubbly aldehydes, um, it is very Chanel and the rose in there is the rose Chanel. However, the other ingredients mm, twisted into something that is not necessarily Chanel. Hmm. This one definitely keeps me guessing. Oh, now I got it. Uh, Balenciaga's, I call it Ho Hang, <laughs> but like Ho Hang or something like, how would you pronounce it? Ho Hang or Ho Hang or Ho Hang, uh, but it's H-O-H-A-N-G. It has, it's very reminiscent of the original Ho Hang by Balenciaga. Except this one is more elevated, more bubbly, zesty, prickly. It kind of like explodes in your nose whenever you smell it. So it's, it's, it's effervescent. Uh, Ho-Hang is not, or Ho-Hang, oh my god, what a name, Ho-Hang, but it's definitely a roller coaster ride, because if you're expecting, if you're expecting a regular Chanel, regular, if you're expecting a Chanel Les Exclusives, this one will surprise you, definitely, I am suspecting, because I'm trying it on as we speak, I'm suspecting that on my skin, longevity will be good. It's going to last a long time. Projection, it's going to stay relatively close to the skin, I think. 
But there's something very, very grassy in there as well and earthy, which I think will be noticeable on longer distances as well. And there's that kind of peppery note or whatever it is, like fresh cru- fresh bleh, fresh cut green grass that gives me a, that that kind of vibe is in there. And it and usually fresh cut green grass together with a peppery hint or note kind of bites your nose a little bit. And that that's what this that's what gives me this effervescent uh Illusion, if you may. Um, the dry down, now we're slowly getting there. I mean, we're not, actually. I don't think this is even close to the dry down. But I can envision and imagine that it's going to head more towards a powdery vanilla sandalwoody touch. What I definitely have to say is Olivier Polge is not Jacques Polge. And... Um, Chance Ovive is very different from the other three chances that we got. Uh, and Misia is already quite different from the rest of the Les Exclusives lines uh, range. Um, Boy is even more different than Misia. And will you guys like it? If you love the Les Exclusives, you will probably have to battle it out with this one a little bit to kind of try to understand it. I'm definitely going to have to wear this for days and days before I could do another kind of, not review, but before I could mention it again in a video and tell you how, you know, how it's developing on me, how it's growing on me or how I am growing on it and what sort of emotions it gives me or doesn't give me. But for now, it confuses me, definitely confuses me. And if I were to end on a travel note, I'm really excited that I got to finally smell this perfume. So I'm not letting myself really like just like loose and fall into it like I usually do with my perfume reviews. But if I were to go on a quick trip <laughs> mental ride uh, with with this one. OK, are you ready? OK, let's do this quickly. Um, literally, I'm passing next to a guy who has a trench coat in tweed, though. So you, maybe you don't call it a trench coat. And it's as if I'm not going to say he's going to flash, you know, himself underneath. He has nothing. No, he kind of flashes it and shows a white shirt underneath. But I don't get I never get close enough to smell that white shirt. So it's kind of an illusion of it. But then it disappears and he walks away. The street I'm walking on now the portrayal of the director of this movie, because we are in a black and white movie, um, is of a damp street, like a film noir damp street. But in reality, the street is completely dry. Like the movie is trying to give us the illusion of a damp, wet, humid street, but it's not humid. And the flasher gives you the illusion he's going to flash, you know, his naked skin underneath the jacket and tweed. But in reality, there's a white shirt underneath that in reality, you can't really smell, even though you would like it to smell in a particular way, but you can't come too close. So I keep on walking down this alley, we could call it. Uh, and uh, to you guys from the outside, because you're watching the movie, it seems like I'm walking down this humid alley, but it's all dry to me. And I am somewhere at the sea, so maybe it's Biarritz or somewhere. And I have the feeling that there could be seagulls. I hear them, but I don't see them. <laughs> I, I don't see them, but I hear them. Another illusion. There's a hooker on one of the doorways to one of the houses. You know how it's so beautiful, how it's portrayed. If you go to really old European cities uh, in the center of town or where usually the prostitution areas were back in the day. And we're talking not Middle Ages, but right after. I mean, I, you know, it was a bit less forbidden. <laughs> the high heels of the hookers or the heels of the hookers, because they would be waiting for the guys to come in. They would kind of twirl their heel on the cement or on the rocks. And a lot of these houses you could check out when you're walking down and up the, the streets of these beautiful, old, majestic, ancient cities. You could see holes in in these doorways where they would be waiting, you know, for the guys to come in. So literally throughout the years and years and years, they would really bore in, like make these like holes in, in the floor. So I'm passing by and I'm noticing this hooker twisting the heel. And maybe it's the Paris Rome collection from Chanel. And she's twisting her heel, you know, not a Papagallo pump. This is more a mule. 
And uh, and I look down and in this hole, like I see that she's twisting in, in a hole. But when I kind of look down to look at it, there's no hole. Another illusion. And I look up at this prostitute and all of a sudden it's a nun. It's not a prostitute and there is no high heel. Another illusion. It's night, everything is black and white for you guys, but it's daytime. And you think that there's a moon, but actually there's sun shining. And I'm coming towards the end of this alley, and the alley ends where a huge field of heliotropes begins. But the heliotropes smell like lavender mixed with rose. <laughs> and yet there's no flower in reality. So this is what I'm really, I guess, it's kind of genius to think about it, calling something boy, even though it's dedicated to boy capel, but it hints on boy and gender. It's everything and nothing, not in the bad way, in a good way, because it literally creates an illusion and just makes it evaporate. The second it creates it, it's gone. And then it creates another bubble and it pops it again. It's like bam, 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 bam. It keeps popping these bubbles out. And uh, you keep guessing and you keep trying to grasp them and they, they, they're they so evasive and elusive. So they keep running away from you. Oh my God, this boy is driving me crazy. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, you're not as confused as I am right now. But this is, I'm just honest. This is exactly what it's giving me, the vibes it's giving me right now. If you did like this review, leave me comments in the comment section below and do thumb it up, please. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I am also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, let me know all sorts of things. Let me know if you smelled boy and if you have what you think about boy. And um, no matter what boy you decide to wear, love or hate, boy aside, never give up on love, guys. Love ya. Bye.